here is every single league in NHL 24, how to do them and in which in-game positions they are the most useful. Important to note, I am using skill stick. Now, if you are using the new total controls, it is still mostly the exact same controls to do the digs. Only difference here are those four buttons. The toe drag, the lacrosse move, the between the legs and the one-handed tuck are accessible by just pressing one button. But other than those four digs, every single other one is done the exact same way. Also, I am on Xbox, so for PlayStation users, if you're not sure which button is which on your console, here's a little chart. Let's get into every single dig in NHL 24. So first off, the windmill dig. One of the more simpler digs to do in game. To do the windmill dig, while holding down LB, flick your right stick to either side. You can also hold the puck to either your forehand or backhand before doing it. That way you get a little bit more range from it. I would say the most useful place for this stick is while entering the zone or in one-on-one -on -one situations. It's also a different type of windmill dig in the game, which is the slow windmill dig. The difference here is you're standing still, so your player will actually move in the direction where you're digging. Standstill windmill isn't one that I would advise anyone using because of our next dig actually, which is the one touch dig. To do the one touch dig, press LB. That is all. Again, you can of course do this dig in both directions. And off the rush, I actually prefer this dig to the windmill dig, just because I feel like it is a little bit more easier to control. And as I was saying about the standstill windmill, I don't really like that one, just because I feel like the one touch dig standstill is a lot quicker. Again, you can do this the exact same way as the one touch dig, just standing still and pressing LB. Wherever you point your left stick while pressing it will dictate which direction the dig will go. This dig is actually pretty helpful if you're ever in a situation where your player has lost all their speed. For example, if you're at the point and your opponent is about to pressure you, you can move out of the way using this standstill one-touch dig. Now moving on to the toe drag dig, which looks like this. To do the toe drag, you must first Hold the puck to your forehand, so with a right-handed player about 3 o'clock on the right stick. And when you're in this position, you're gonna rotate the right stick from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock. To do it on the other side, you hold the right stick to about 9 o'clock and rotate down to about 3 o'clock. The toe drag also has its standstill variants, and actually these ones can be pretty effective for goal scoring. To do the standstill toe drag, combine the same motion of the toe drag with holding the left stick to the preferred side. So for example, in this case, I would be holding down the left stick to the left to make my player move in that direction. The toe drags used to be very effective from the side of the net, like that. But this here, I have found the goal is to be a little bit better at saving those. So for example, the standstill variant like this hasn't been quite as effective. It still does work from time to time, but I felt like it isn't as effective as last year. So the best time to use the toe drag, in my opinion, is entering the zone, trying to get around the defenders, just like the windmill dig and the one time. Moving on to possibly my favorite dig in the game, which is the jump dig. To do the jump dig, you hold down LB and then push up on the right stick. To be honest, it is not a very functional dig at all, except in my favorite scenario, which is when I have landed a huge hit on somebody and then I'm able to jump dig over the person I just hit. Next up is the spinorama. Very simple to do, just tap LT or L2. I have actually started to use the spinorama a lot just because the backskating isn't as effective as it used to be. So often to avoid hits, I use the spinorama after I enter the zone. It also helps with protecting the puck because your opponent isn't able to poke check while you do the spinorama. 
What's good about the spinorama is you can do it pretty much anywhere. So it's really just up to your own creativity on how you use it. Just like many other digs, the direction of your spinorama is dictated by your left stick. Next up, we might have the coolest dig that actually nobody ever uses, which is the open eyes one-hander. Honestly, I have no idea when is the last time I've ever used this, but to do it, you first must hold down the puck on your backhand. So with the righty, hold to the backhand by pushing the right stick to about 9 o'clock, then hold LB and then rotate up to about 12 o'clock. The move is actually quite flashy, it looks kind of cool, but there is a lot of other digs that pretty much do the exact same thing. So this one is very underused. Props to anyone who actually uses this effectively. Next up, we actually have my second year in a row go to breakaway move, which is the stride dig. To do the stride dig, you must actually stop skating for a moment, then hold down LB and then move the left stick to either side. The benefit of the stride dig is that you never lose the puck even for a moment. So you are able to shoot after it right away. This year it has seemed that going to the backhand with the stride dig seems to be a very effective way to score on the breakaway. Last year it was a lot better to do it to the forehand. It still sometimes can work but more often than not, the goal is gonna save it, it seems. As I say that, I scored two in a row. <laughs> Next on the list are all the skate digs that are in the game. There is a lot of ways you can actually do them. So to control it, you use both of your sticks. So for example, you can go from left to left by pushing both sticks to the left. To do the skate dig, you hold L1 and then push down on the right stick. There's a lot of variations of the skate digs, but the one I use the most is this one. The benefit of this one is that you can actually change directions and kind of shield the puck at the same time, because your player takes the puck a little bit further out from the defenders. So you can often get around a defender just by doing this one skate dig. It does work from the other side as well, but I prefer doing it from the backhand to the forehand. Another variation of the skate dig is the Kyle Terry's one. So what you want to do is rotate from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock and then I don't know what, what the actual commands even are, but I just press LB and spam down on the right stick, if that makes sense. So put it all together, we go forehand backwards and then while I press LB once, I spam the right stick down a bunch of times. The Kyle Turris dig is very flashy in my opinion. One of my favorite digs in the game for actually gaining an advantage in games. This is, this is not the one you want to use. Next up on the list is the between the legs dig. I call this the original between the legs dig because this has been in the game forever. First of all, you need to bring the puck back as far as you can onto the forehand side. And from that position, you bring the right stick up and press LB at the same time. This is also very useful at the blue line when entering the zone, because you're at the same time shielding the puck and then changing directions. So it's very hard for your opponent to get the puck at any moment. Onto the new between the legs, which is this one. There are a bunch of things you can do from this position. To get the puck between your legs, it is very easy. Just hold down LB and the right stick at the same time. So you're pressing LB and then pushing in on the right stick. Now from the between the legs position, you can do many things. You can release it just by letting go of the buttons. Or you can do a pass, saucer pass, or a shot like this. I actually really enjoy the passing options from the between the legs, just because you are changing the angle of the pass just ever so slightly, but that often can be the difference between the opponent being able to intercept that pass or not. The between the legs shot, honestly, it doesn't seem to go in in this game. 
last year we could do it while back skating which was amazing but this year it doesn't really work that well so the between the legs shot for hot is kind of dead you never know you can get one like that every once in a while now it's time for a fun one these are called seam side peaks there are two variations one like that and one like this to do them this is again i'm not even actually sure what the controls according to the game are but when I'm doing them, basically first I hold the right stick to the side and then pressing LB, I just keep spamming the right stick to the side that I'm going for. It works the same on both sides, so I'm basically just tapping the right stick to that side many times when I press that left bumper. I personally use the forehand one a lot, especially this year when the success rate of the dig is a lot higher. So this is again one that I mainly use when I'm trying to enter the zone like that. Or you can also do it from the side to get into the zone. This is a very tricky move and very rarely do you see anyone pull it off online. But it really is one of my favorite ones to try and do. Now next up, there are two types of tap back digs, that is what they call it in game. But these are the behind the back one hander as well as the Zetterberg dig. To do the behind the back one hander, you first hold the puck as far as you can on the forehand. You need to do a motion on the right stick that goes something like this. From the far back on the forehand position, you Take the right stick first to the left, then to the right. So from first holding the puck as far back on the forehand as possible, on the right stick you want to do left, right. And while you do that, you press LB. So it's something like this. Puck in protection, then LB left, right. Like all at the same time, basically. Now, the Zetterberg dig is kind of similar, but not really. So for this one, you hold it to the backhand side, and then in one motion, when you're pressing LB, you tap back from the left to right to left, basically. And all while doing that, you must also be holding the left stick towards your player's backhand. If you don't hold the left stick towards your backhand, your player will only do a windmill. These these ones are amongst the like flashiest sticks in the game and they honestly don't have that many uses in game. These are the ones you want to flex on your opponents with. These are, these are not the ones you want to use to win games, not at all. There are a couple of ways to score with them, but mainly, mainly there for just being flashy and trying to go for some crazy clips. Next up, something that isn't as useless as the other ones, the Forsberg or the one-hander. The one-handed tuck is executed by holding the puck to either your forehand or your backhand. And from that position, you wanna push in R1 and L1. Remember to push L1 in first, because if you press R1 in first, it won't do it. At the same time, both of them is fine, but make sure you're not pressing right bumper in any earlier than the left bumper. This one has the two possibilities of doing it, either on the forehand or the backhand. This one seems to go in quite a bit, even in hot. To make the one-hander even more effective, you can actually execute it right after your player receives the pass. This way the goaltender is not ready for it at all, and it increases the odds of scoring a ton. Next up is the Datsuk, which looks like this. The Datsuk Deek is made from a fake shot. A fake shot is just tapping down the right stick. From the fake shot, you want to continue by bringing the right stick down. And from this position, you're actually able to do three things, or four. You can always release it and not, th not do anything. Or you can pass it from here, shoot it from here, or do the actual Datsuk flip, which we all love. For the Datsuk flip from this position, you just tap 
RB. Next up on the list we have the Michigan or the lacrosse goal which looks like this. To do the Michigan on skill stick controls first move to the player's forehand and from that position while holding the right stick to the forehand side in this case as a right-handed player the right stick to the right you wanna push the right stick in at the same time as well as holding down LB. In this position where you're holding down all those buttons I mentioned you wanna rotate just like in a toe drag you wanna rotate the right stick from the right to the left and from behind the net it should look just about like this. New to NHL 24, we can actually do the exact same dig from the opposite side. The exact same controls and your player does it from the other side like this. Along with the regular Michigan, there is also the Michigan pass, which is done the exact same way you do a Michigan, except you also have to push in the right bumper. So now you're actually first going to the forehand then holding down left bumper and right stick and from this position you want to actually hold down another button which is the right bumper and then you do the toe drag motion on the right stick next up is the slip dig which looks like this you can do it on both sides of the ice along the boards to do this move it is very simple along the boards tap lb while holding your left stick towards the boards. Doesn't have to be directly towards the boards, but for example here, just holding it up and to the right a little bit, and it will register as the slip dig. The slip dig is actually very usable in game. If your opponent is going for a hit, for example at the blue line, you can very easily avoid the hit by using the slip dig. Next up, similar to the slip dig, it is the board self pass or whatever you want to call that to do this it's very simple first of all you need to not be using your right stick just skating and pressing left bumper as well as the right trigger so the pass button i feel like this one is actually not very good in this year's game because i feel like the player's skating direction doesn't really change all that much now with the same controls so left bumper and right trigger together you can do two other digs as well. The first one is the open ice self pass, which I prefer to the board self pass. So for this one, you have to hold the puck to either your forehand or backhand, and then press the two buttons I mentioned before. And this one is actually very nice when you're able to do it. So let's say your opponent is going for a hit right there at the blue line. You might be able to dance around him, throw the puck to the other side, and collect it afterwards once your opponent has missed his check and you're all alone behind his defender. And the other dig that you do with the same controls is the Crosby dig behind the net. You can do this behind your opponent's net or behind your own net like this. So to do this it is again just left bumper right trigger combo. The Crosby dig is again one of the flashier ones if you're able to do this against your opponent and score. I, I think your opponent has a very good chance of rage quitting after that. But that takes us to the final dig of the video, which is the Kucherov fake dig. To do this, you are actually doing a stride dig, which I covered already. So from a gliding position, you hold down LB and then move your left stick to the side. But for the Kucherov, you actually want to combine this with moving your right stick to the right. So for a right-handed player, you do the straight stick to the left with the left stick, and at the same time, you move your right stick to the right. For lefties, it's of course switch the other way around. And if someone is able to do this online, like that, uh, I will personally report you to EA Sports for bullying. But hey, that was every single dig in NHL 24. If I missed a dig, be sure to let me know. I'm actually gonna be very sad about that because 
I should be the one that knows all the geeks. But hey, thanks for watching everyone, and if you found this video helpful, I would actually really appreciate if you sub to the channel as we are making our way to the 1000 mark.